Hey, my name is Jared. Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the second video on the gas tank repair. On the first video, we cleaned it out and got it prepared for sealing. Before you work on any gas tank, you need to make sure that it is perfectly clean of any fuel vapors because any little spark or anything can cause a fire. One of the commenters on the previous video mentioned sealing the outside first. So what I did, that's a good idea. I think what I'm going to do is use a seal all because it's supposed to be uh, gasoline resistant, gas and oil resistant. I'm not too worried about long. Also for my subscribers, I forgot to mention, we just opened up the official Texas Hibbley merchandise store. So if you go to the link on the bottom of this uh, channel description. Don't get his t-shirts, get mine. <laughs> Yeah, so Sam's got his own channel called Little Texas Hillbilly, and there are some youth t-shirts that say Little Texas Hillbilly. It'll work for the main channel as well. Um, we now have an official Instagram page. Also, we have a second channel called Texas Hillbilly Homestead. That's all the extra content, stuff that doesn't really go in line with this, this channel's theme. Um, so it's, it's kind of like extra. All right, we're prepping this tank. Anywhere I think there's a pinhole, I'm going to go ahead and scrub it and put some sealant. Man, this actually cleans it really good. What's that? It does. Yeah. Maybe I should paint the tank. I mean, a coating of like rust stop black rust oleum would probably be a good idea, right? Is that like bed liner stuff? The bed liner material? Yeah. Possibly. Keep away from children. Children? You're gonna get my video demonetized because a child is doing a dangerous activity. <laughs> Don't let your kid have a knife in a video. You get a, you get a channel strike. So apparently a knife is a dangerous weapon, huh? Yeah. Apparently an open knife with a children, or with a child holding it. Is wrong. It's a dangerous weapon here. Yeah, they don't know that you're like 30 years old. Ooh, it stinks. Very stinky. That's probably a good thing. Usually when a chemical stinks really bad, it's a good chemical. Here's a pinhole. That's a pinhole right there. What a weird spot for a pinhole. This is the bottom of the tank. But like, I guess there was a metal shield right here. That's probably why that has a pinhole. I wonder if you could hear the shop on camera. Like every time a cloud comes over, the shop shrinks. And every time the cloud goes away, the shop expands. So you hear everything popping and cracking. All right, now we're really gonna goop this guy because this is where there were some massive holes. This stuff really stinks, so I'm gonna run a fan and ventilate this area out. It actually kind of burns my eyes. This stuff dried enough to work with. There's some puddles here, but I'm not really gonna handle those, so I'm not too worried about it. What I'm doing with these footballs is I'm plugging holes with them, just so that I can work the sealer around and it doesn't pour out. That way I don't have to tape up these holes, as I'm afraid tape won't really stick. There's three steps to do the KBS coating process to seal your tank. Step one, KBS clean. Very important to clean your tank. Step two is KBS Rust Blast, which destroys all the rust and, and gets it out, right? And then step three is KBS Tank Sealer. So very important to do all three steps. So I'm gonna skip straight to Tank Sealer. Now don't whip it, just stir it. Oh yeah, do this in a properly ventilated area with gloves and eye protection. In case it splashes in your eyeball, Ow. then you're blind forever. But I have my safety contacts in, so I'm okay. Let's start pouring this in. Pour the entire ball, uh, can in. Ew, that looks like silver paint. Looks like metal, right? Mm-hmm. Melted metal. Really glossy. It's pretty wild. Let's seal this off. And then we're gonna set a timer 
for 30 minutes and I'm gonna work this for 30 freaking minutes. That's crazy. Let's do that. This should put all the material on this bottom seam. I'm just gonna slowly work it. Now we should have a quart down here in this corner. Thirty minutes I gotta do this. Now obviously if they don't want you to whip it because they don't want you to introduce air into the system, you don't want to shake the tank. You just want to move it slowly. Sleeper Dude just used this same product on one of his tanks. And it's funny because I probably bought this before he did and he just got to it faster, you know? And then uh, I bought the Pinto and then uh, all the YouTubers are buying little cars, Pintos and Gremlins and Pacers and I'm like one step ahead of the curve. I just can't get the videos out before they can. <laughs> so it looks like I'm following and copying them. All right, so hopefully all the material is laid flat, working this way and dropping down into the deeper part, which is, the tank's upside down right now. Which is where a lot of pinholes are. Now I hope it's all running down. How's that new bike? Good. I don't understand how it goes backwards but like doesn't make the wheel go backwards. That's like a ratchet. Oh yeah, that's why it makes the... That's why it clicks, exactly. I'm glad I could say it's like a ratchet, you know what I'm talking about. It's only been five minutes. Oh, don't knock a foot off. There's some sealer on the bottom of the tank. I don't know if I spilled some or if it's coming through. That's a good thing. Oh, there it is coming through. There's a bunch of sealer here. Pinholes that I didn't see. You see pinholes? Well, there's tank sealer coming through. I touched it in a few spots. Like right there, even though I touched it. Right there, you can see one that I didn't touch. That's what it looks like when the tank sealer comes out. All those are pinholes. I touched one of them right there, obviously, but the those three little dots and that one dot there, that's tank sealer. I think it's doing its job. So whether I put that, this, this uh, seal all, what is it called? I don't even remember. Whether I put that first sealant on there or not, I think it still would do the job. Should we take a peek inside? Oh, that's crazy looking. Look at it moving in there. Whoa. It looks like the, the Ghostbusters River of Slime. That's the River of Slime. Dang, it's actually doing a great job. All right, so since I can see that it is really like coating every surface, I'm going to start rotating like crazy. Not fast. That was 30 minutes of rotating. And uh, what's crazy is you can see every spot where there's a pinhole. Because- Oh, I see a bunch on there. Yeah. There, there. Every little spot. And even if the material's down here, it continues to push material out. It's so weird. I hey, don't touch it, it's really sticky. It's all over me, look at my arm. The, uh, this thing isn't sealing at all. So I'm gonna take this out soon so it doesn't like dry up in all those grooves. But we need to drain it into something Probably the can that it came in. Nothing's coming out yet. It's all in that corner. There it goes. Oh, cool. Okay, here we go. All right, and all this stuff that you pour out, you can apply on the outside of the tank mm -hmm. to help seal. Now it's a normal uh, big tank bullet. Yeah. 37 mil or something, maybe 40. Oh, it's thick. Oh, wow. Looks like it's really sealing up. Oh man, that's crazy. That is so sealed. Incredible. 
Uh, I'm going to let it drain a while. And then I'm going to use the excess. I'm going to kind of coat the outside areas where I know there's some leaks. Because it shows you where there's leaks. And then I'm going to wash up and step away and let this thing dry. So it's kind of... washing up. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a disaster, honestly. You really, I probably should have put down a bunch of paper or something. There's stuff everywhere. Maybe put some gloves on you. <sighs> Thank you, son. <laughs> If you look in there you kind of can see where there's well, you probably can't see there are some pinholes around the um, actually right there there's some pinholes hopefully those seal up I don't know how kind of looks like that one down there sealed up I think if I leave this kind of sitting for a while with the bottom side down it'll seal where the fuel would be and uh, it says to rotate it like every five minutes when you're done see the stuff very slowly working its way downhill <clears throat> so it's still still not really setting up you know it takes a long time to really actually fully set up which is good I don't know I think it's good there's a big old clump right here working its way down this entire section working its way down I did all around the seam you know anywhere that water would potentially stick or stand This area right here is where there was a pinhole that I could see from the inside. There's no way there's a pinhole now, you know? There's no way. But it still looks like pinholes. Is that just reflections? I can't even tell. I think it's reflections. Yeah, that's reflections. That's not pinholes anymore. So I think it's working. All right, uh, it's been probably 30 minutes. I'm gonna put a coat down here on the bottom going to use up the rest of the can on the bottom side. <laughs> this, uh, the sealant, the, the coating is finally like not really flowing anymore, not really running. So I think we're nearing the end of it setting up. Now it takes 96 hours to cure completely. So that's going to be a while. That sucks. That is four days straight. Now this is a four day weekend for me, but I think that's gonna fall on my first day of work. So that's okay. At least we got it done, right? I should have done this yesterday. Be careful, that thing has got is paint all over it. Is this how the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz did it? Look okay. how much better it looks. Like it was all rust, you know? With like clumps and, I mean, a bunch of pinholes. Oh and wow. It's completely sealed. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So I don't know how this thing ever ran with holes all in the in the gas tank before, but this is going to be the solution. It's really good. Thankfully, I think this will work, and I hope it does because new gas tanks are, um, they don't make them. Oh, yeah. All right, it's been about five days since I did the KBS tank sealer, and it has done a fantastic job. As far as I can tell, all pinholes are sealed. It's an amazing finish. It, it's hardly, you can hardly tell this is the same tank from before. What point we're at now is installing the Hyperfuel 40015. This is a in-tank fuel pump designed to retrofit your factory fuel tank into an EFI fuel tank. And uh, you have to replace all your fuel lines and you don't use your original sending unit, obviously, or your original intake tube. So let's, uh, let's start putting this together. Uh, the first step was to drill the two and one eighth inch hole. I went and bought a hole saw and drilled that hole. Now you get your red C-ring, just slap it on there, and drill your holes. No big deal. All right, ready to drill the holes. Here's a quick hack. If you have Porter Cable tools, buy some cheap Black & Decker, uh, like leaf blower and weed eater off Amazon, and you just do a little modification right here, a little modification right here, or here, somewhere, and you could use Black & Decker's like discontinued batteries off Amazon for dirt cheap. Believe it or not, Jay, right away. I can't find anything to mark with, so I'm gonna do little bitty like indicated indicator holes, you know, just that. 
I'm going to get metal shavings in the tank for sure. There's no stopping that. But I'm going to reduce it as much as possible. I'm taking all this time trying to patch holes in a gas tank, right? And then you're drilling a hole. And then I'm adding holes. It's kind of ridiculous. Slit right through my finger. Jeez, let's do it again. Dang, that's a sharp little turd. All right, good job. All right, next step is to get these. Um, all the hardware that comes with this kit, you get the screws that are uh, they're M5 countersunk screws, and you slide them. Actually, you thread them into the C-ring. You know what I want to do? I want to get a uh, like almost industrial-ish ceiling fan. I just want it to be quiet and big, and put it right there in the middle, way up high, just to move some air around. You know, tighten up these screws in the red C-ring. Slide the red searing into the two and one-eighth inch diameter hole, inserting the screws back through the six drilled holes. Okay, so like this. This is gonna be kind of hard to do. Maybe not. There it is, look at that. And then install the foam gasket. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy, and hi, buddy. Snap filter sock onto the end of the fuel pump. Okay, here's the fuel pump. A 40108, 255 liter per minute Harper Fuel fuel pump. What's that pad? And this is a fuel sock. It's like a sponge and it sits in your fuel tank. It's like a filter too. It keeps crud from going into it, but it also, like this entire thing, sucks fuel through that hole. All right, um, whatever. Let's just slap it on. Okay, that's it. It just, just crams on like that. It is nine and five eighths. Their instructions are a little bit confusing, but I think I got it figured out. So if I measure straight down, I got nine and five eighths from the top surface of the tank. So that is the, the measurement I need from here to the bottom of the sock. So if I were to kind of get that measurement like this, nine and an eighth would need to be, or, or nine and a, uh, five eighths. So let's say we make the bottom of the sock at like nine and a half, right around there. And I'm all wobbly, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this hose here and try not to cut the other hose. It's cutting. Dang, that's some hard stuff. Now, I saw there was like a tight cutting thing right there. That's bolt cutters. <laughs> I don't think I need bolt cutters. You could um, chop it off better. So the problem is you need a heat gun to expand this this hose out to slide this onto it, and I don't have a heat gun, so I probably should buy one. It says here the pump should slide in with ease. If it is difficult, the tube is not heated enough. Let's break to go get a heat gun. I guess it's a trip to Harbor Freight. Kind of discoloring. Well, it went in easy, very easy. Definitely not hard, like they said it shouldn't be. Now that it's in there, I'm gonna get this measurement again. It's around nine and a quarter, maybe nine and a half. Ooh, this thing's smoking. Probably some factory oils in there or something. Alright, so that should work perfect. Alright, let's slide this on. I'm sure you're supposed to do this. And uh, let's tighten up this fuel clamp. Locate the pump against the mounting bracket. Make sure it is secured in position with the two wire straps. Comes with the zip ties you need. There you have it. That is the fuel pump setup for my application.
Next, insert the main assembly into the tank, lower it down over the countersuck screws. We'll just start shoving it in. There it goes. My return line is getting hung up. It's wanting to push the whole C-ring down. Let me rotate it to where the return line can go through the C-ring, through the little C-gap, right? God, that's tight. There it goes. Now I want these fittings facing forward. Something like that. Okay, O-rings, and then I would assume the flat washer, and then the nut. Let me get a nut driver. I don't know what size that is, but I guessed right. I just realized there may not be room for this. It might be touching the underside of the body. Whatever. Cross that bridge when we get there. I mean, there was a vent here, right? But that vent only sticks up that high. That high. Very, very flush. FedEx is here. Why is FedEx here? It was ButcherBox, which I'm not sponsored by, so I'm not going to show you what's in here. Hit me up, ButcherBox. Okay, back to the instructions. Where were we? Tighten securely using crisscross pattern. That's it. Install the tank back in the vehicle and do wiring. All right, so let's uh, actually going to tighten those a little better. Okay. Who was hot in here? Not even summer yet. It's barely, what, June? June 1st? No, it's not even June. May 31st. And I'm sweating my butt off. I really need a fan in here. Hit me up, big ass fans. <laughs> I wish. Let's get this little vent in here. Which I probably didn't need, shouldn't have bought. But that's the way it is. don't really know which way it needs to go. Hopefully I can turn it once it's in there, but I'm gonna aim that way. Okay, that's in. So that's like how much room I probably have under the tank, under the, the car. And that, <laughs> yeah, hopefully that doesn't hit. It looks like it's like a quarter inch above. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's about three eighths, maybe more, I can't tell. But um, that's fine. It's nearly touching that rib over there. I think it's great. Awesome. That is the Hyperfield 40015 installed in a Pinto fuel tank. Pinto wagon fuel tank, which is unattainable. There we go. Ground and power. I gotta do fuel lines. Against Hyperfuel's advice, I'm gonna mi mismatch uh, fittings with fuel hose. But um, I got this this uh, fuel filter for way less than Hyperfuel sells theirs for, and it's a higher micron. This is, I believe, a 100 micron, and then Hyperfuel's was like a 40, and this is a fraction of the price. Of course, it's an Amazon product. The reason I went with it is because well, it's cheap, but also its ratings were very, very good. Uh, also, these fittings ratings, Evil Energy. Stupid name, but um, really good ratings. Now, I'm a little worried because you know how Amazon is. Somebody buys, if a car guy buys stuff off Amazon, they're probably like immediately reviewing it, not reviewing it like a month later. So the concern here is that it'll leak. Well, whatever. If it leaks, I'll deal with that down the road. Hopefully not down the road. Hopefully in the driveway, right? So let's, um, I'm not gonna install the filter right now. I'm gonna install the filter at a later date, but I do want to make up both ends of this and put fittings and connect it to the return and the supply. And um, I'll just leave it looped under the car and later on I'll cut it and put the filter in line. And you know, I'm gonna have to buy another 12 foot or so. I forgot about the return. Maybe, maybe not 12 foot, maybe 10 or eight foot. So let's uh, learn how to put fittings on these. Does this happen to tell me anything? 
No, it's on how to prime your pump, I believe. Using the fittings, whatever size fittings to hose connect and hose to connect the fuel tank to fuel filter, then to fuel pump inlet side and to little micron filter. Making making sure connections are not leaky. <laughs> okay. I was gonna say it looks like it was well translated, but not so sure. Alright, looking under the car. Looking down here under the pinto, you can see where the pump is gonna be in like this general area right around here so i want the fuel lines to go in the direction the original ones were um but you see how i can go a little bit to the right right in that gap and it's highest i'll have the most clearance if i point too much to the to the driver side of, side of the car i i lose room so i'm going to make sure they point kind of straight that way right next to the shock absorber all right so that would be that's outlet and this should be return now I think if I use these 45s here, it should kind of send them in the right direction. Like the, if I were to use a straight here, I think it would go too far towards that, that tighter section. So if them two both come out here, they come together and go down. I think that'd be perfect, the perfect orientation. So let's make these connections. All right, this side already has a really good coating or, or wrapping of tape on it. I'm gonna wrap this one better. Now all this really does is make sure that the good lord, the heck kind of tape is that? Um, make sure the uh, oh you like the bracelet my daughter made for me, poop and turds, I love it. Um, yeah, the the tape really just keeps the wires from fraying, like the steel belts. It's kind of important. Now the best, like they just chopped them off with like wire, uh, with dikes or something. What I'm gonna do is kinda cut them with the angle grinder. If you watch the Jeep series, you know that I hate angle grinders. So, uh, wish me luck. I think I'm gonna get my air compressor and blow these out or something. All right, these are the connections. That is the ferrule. I need to get this on and pull the tape off, don't I? Get out of here, bud. Ow. Very sharp. Just cut my knuckle open. Dang. Alright, so that goes this way. Somehow, some way. Jeez, that really did cut me open good, huh? Alright, that's good enough. So be careful, they are very sharp. This will cut, cut you open in a heartbeat. So let's stick this on. Now I watched a video on how to do this, but it didn't really seem like they were the same type of uh, connections. So whatever, we're gonna find out. So if that's on, then I believe this goes between the hose and the steel braiding. All right, that is actually butted up onto the uh, connection exactly where I think it's needed. I think, I think it's gonna work like that. I think that's right. I hope this works. No big deal. If I end up getting a leak, I learned my lesson and uh, order some Earls or something, right? Mm. Or some air motors. Okay. One fitting down, and it still pivots. That's cool. You can still change the angle. I was worried about that, or wondering about that. So, all right, one down. That's awesome. Tell you what, you want to give your kid like a million hours of fun, buy a vice. Oh, that's stripped out. Don't buy a Harbor Freight vice. But it's better than nothing, that's for sure. When I was a kid, I used to spend hours just smashing stuff in a vice, you know? And then when I got this vice set up on the workbench, when I first got the shop all together, I caught my son out here just smashing all kinds of stuff, and he still does it. Proud dad moment. Oh, by the way, when I when I put the air hose to it, a lot of crap shot out of it. It did it did good. I'm glad I did that. Now I found out what the aluminum wrenches are for. It just keeps from scratching up your fittings. Like if you got a show car, and you don't want scratched up fittings to be seen in the engine bay or under your you know on your mirrors underneath your car. Now, I don't want to scratch these up. But I don't think the Pinto's a show car. Of course, 
if it was in a car show, I would probably flock to it. Okay, two fittings done. Now let's put these on. And um, I'm gonna leave it connected and cut it whenever the time comes because that just keeps stuff out of the system, right? Okay, and that's kind of touchy. Oh, the whole fitting loosened. What's up with that? All right, so next time, if you, when you get your hyperfuel fuel pump, make sure these fittings are tight before you start tightening your fuel lines. I just realized I put these connections together dry. I didn't use any lubricant. In the video I watched, they used lubricant. Learn from my mistakes, right? If they are mistakes, I will let you know. All right, that's perfect. They're off. Let's go ahead and tighten up the vent. And this is now... <laughs> Pinto's got a fuel pump. Awesome. All right. Also, we have this. This is the Holly Easy Fuel Sender. I already drilled the hole for it, which I could have used this hole. But uh, like I said, I wanted to use a rollover valve. Um, so the Easy Fuel Sender goes here. It takes a power supply that's keyed. What's up? What's up, buddy? What's this? <laughs> Slap your mama. <laughs> Slap your mama, Cajun seasoning. <laughs> Gonna have to try this out. All right, got the Easy Fuel Sender all wired up in red, white, and blue, and black. Patriotic, America, yeah. Uh, we got, oh, I, I did it backwards. I did it backwards. I'm gonna switch this around. I want this to be the ground. This is the uh, gauge, so I'm gonna make that one blue. All right, that's mo' better. We got a nice ground, we got a nice 12 volt supply, and we got a nice gauge. Now, they're just pigtails, so I'll have to make connections later. But I, I do want to do some sort of like disconnect, you know, removable connection. So if I do have to drop the tank in the future, I could disconnect the pump and drop the tank, you know? All right, so this is kind of convoluted. Um, you can go to Holly's video and they show you how to do it. And it's super easy. I did not have that easy of a time trying to do it with the factory pinto gauges, which are there, which uh, all the smoke came out of them. So, which sucks because they look really cool. But uh, I'm going to try to retrofit those Equus gauges right there, which I got on Amazon for dirt cheap. Whatever. They look kind of cool. It's kind of similar to the factory. Um, hopefully they work out. So let's uh, learn how to do this. Okay. Here's the Equus. Equus. I don't know. E-Q-U-U-S. Let's get a battery up here and work on this. I'm gonna move the fuel tank for now. You look adorable. You got a new Nike outfit. You look like a Barbie. For real? <laughs> Are you the real life Barbie? No. no. Not allowed to show bellies, girl. Nikki. <laughs> That's cool, I like your Nikki shirt. It's not Nikki. Oh. What's that? That's a band-aid. That's a man-aid. What happened? It's a man band-aid. I cut my finger. What's left? Well, I was in here working and all of a sudden this wild cat came here and tried to attack no. me. There was a car wreck and I ran over there to save no. the... I cut myself on a hose. A hose? These fittings. I was making those fittings and then I got cut. Look how they spin. Looks like rains to a horse, right? It is going to a Pinto, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wear that outfit outside, okay? You're never allowed to wear it, ever. About to get punched, watch. Oh, okay, okay. All right, you can wear it every once in a while. <laughs> All right, easy level sender. 19-250 insulation with classic instruments gauge. Well, I'm not using classic instruments. What about not with classic instruments gauge? Whatever, let's just do what it says, right? Still got a tooth, huh? It's all right, you want that tooth fairy's 25 cents, huh? What tooth fairy? The tooth fairy, you want the 25 cents that the tooth fairy gives you every time you lose a tooth. Oh, is it a nickel? I don't know. I don't 
on camera again. <laughs> Jeez, okay. You see something different on you? You got brand new shoes? Yeah, yeah what'd you go on a shopping spree? What, did we win the lottery? That's perfect. Hey, get off me, mosquito. I want to go see if the plants are still alive. I'm pretty sure a deer got into the garden. Hey. Hey. Scene crashing. Scene crashing? You're just improving the scene. Hey, did you see my fuel pump wiring? My fuel pump? My hoses? Ooh, Check it out. That's nice. That's a new wire supply. Oh this my gosh, it's so pretty. Outlet, that's return. That's a rollover valve. Whoa. And I'm about to, I'm working on the uh, fuel sending unit so the gauge works I mean, properly. That is like so modern and pretty. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. Almost too good for a Pinto. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like you, too good for me. Oh, come on now. It's the other way around. Okay, power's hooked up. Yeah, my face. There's another mosquito. Right there. Got some blood out of me. Hope it's not a Bill Gates mosquito. It doesn't really tell you, but you hold P1 down until it changes to solid blue. Okay, now press P2 or P3 to move the gauge pointer to empty. That should be with this thing like facing nothing, right? So it's already at empty, but let's like go up a hair just to see. What did it say, two or three? This isn't doing anything. Oh, okay, well, my grounds came off. Let me do this. I Yeah, you read that and you tell me what to do. First, you have to, off. in order to center the wire, you have to connect a good ground. So there's the ground. You're gonna touch the ground. You gotta connect with the ground. Grounding, I read all about that. It's really good for your body. It like produces neutrons and electrons and all and it like heals you. Alright, to the stud. Alright, so connect a good ground. Alright, I'm connected to the ground. To the stud. To the stud. On the sender labeled G N D. Where's the sender G N D? Okay. <laughs> See? It worked. Green. You're showing half full. Green is good. <laughs> I did the first step. He went to AutoZone, that's what it is. So now that I'm like officially Texas Hillbilly's wife, even though I've always been, but like now since you're Texas, like I can start wearing Texas Hillbilly jewelry. Jewelry. Like. Jewelry. Look at that. Get him at home. Look at that. Get him at home. He put a ring on it. Clothes. Yeah. It's horrible. Not sponsored. I'll just help you out. <laughs> just. <laughs> we'll let you work on this. I just, I guess I'm just gonna go, go through the calibration again. Yeah, not sponsored. Supposedly it's the best Cajun seasoning there is. Sam, slap your mama. No, not really. <laughs> My hands are not the cleanest. My hands are filthy. Give me a little touch. Oh my goodness. Wow. Good. Wow, that's pretty good. Ooh. It doesn't make me want to slap my mama, but um, Chairman, it'll make me want to kick a cat well, at I, most. I like, want to do that without slap your mama or the deer <laughs> that just destroyed my beans. So, I, yeah, are those fresh deer prints in your garden? Mm -hmm. So, even though I built that fence, oh, they still good. got Lily, it. Try? Mm -hmm. So, they're jumping six foot fences and get How in the world? We need to get this on camera. I tell you, I turned the camera so we should be able to watch it's it. It's really, it's a little bit spicy. <laughs> All right, I'm holding it down on full right now Can and it's, it's slowly like making its way to a full. Little piece of that. And I lost my ground. <laughs> you want to try Sam? Just a little bit. There's nothing, there's no crap in it. There's no like. Hey, there's nothing crap in it. There's salt, red pepper, black pepper, and garlic. That's it. And there's There's special. no MSG. There's no. Oh, that's why you picked it. Gluten free. Yeah, can't be a glutton here. Yeah, it's not GMO. No gluttons in this household. Look, oh, it gives Lord. you look, it gives you Mama Jan shrimp dip recipe. Cream cheese, mayonnaise, <laughs> ketchup, oh, chopped much. onions. Oh, that was way too much. You're not supposed to inhale it. Oh my God. Oh, here. Whew. Whiskey. Oh. Oh. What? In 1996, that was way too much. Give me more. W. Walker and his family gathered around the kitchen table. Whoo! Oh, like oh I want to slap your mama now. Yeah. With the seasoning, oh. a spousal is this abuse. A oh. With the seasoning, blank. Is this a cooking show or is this a man car? 
Okay. We'll He's Texas Hillbilly, hillbilly Kitchen. Hillbilly oh, instead Ooh. of Uncle Chris's, we could do this on potatoes. Oh. His wife, Jennifer, and sisters of the seasoning, he calls slap your mama. You got to say it like that. Slap your mama. Does it say that? No, but you have to say it like that. Okay. It's or occasions, you can't really hear how they talk, so it's like... Slap your mama. There is a point to this video. We're slowly making it to full. Slap your mama. That's how the Cajuns probably talk, right? Like, they talk where you can, like, you hear an accent. They're kind of slurred a little bit. Like, you know, you kind of... Have How's to, it sound? You kind of have to figure out what they're saying. How's it sound? Slap your mama. <laughs> they need captioning. What? Slap your mama. Yeah, I put a little slap your mama on this, you know, pork I can't rib. do a Cajun accent. I put a little slap your mama on these pork ribs. Right? And you're like, what? Slap your mama. What'd you say about mama? With the approval of the Do we even have Those accents? Tell us. It, say it in, write it down in the comments. Do I have an accent? Does she have an accent? Of course I don't. Where is she from? <laughs> if y'all can figure out where she's from by her accent. Okay. You uh, win. Whoever guesses first, I'll send you a sticker. How about that? I say well, orange, orange. All I'll right. take a bite They're of that orange. Free. They're getting a free sticker right uh, away. Let me see, let me see. Only one. I only got one extra. Um, First one to comment. Sherman. I say, I say syrup. These Texans all say syrup. We ain't got time and for those extra, extra syllables. Um, what else? Sir. I say you guys, and they say y'all. Um, what else? Orange. Orange. Syrup. Orange. Orange. What you say, son? We say yeehaw. Uh, they wear boots. What is a... Uh... I wear Crocs. <laughs> I wear sneakers. Oh. Crocs. Get those out of the here. The latest teen fashion. What a... Uh... No, really, I think Crocs are disgusting, but I wear, I wear them because sneakers. we work in the garden. All right, I'm going to slap my mama. I'll be back. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam, that was so gross. Again, where is she from? <laughs> it ain't Texas. Alright, I'm going to do this again, probably off camera, because you saw me go through the motions. Maybe you saw where I made a mistake. If I did, I don't know. But I'll let you know if I get it working. It's working. Finally. I guess I just had to go through it again. I think the instructions are backwards, honestly. What? You should start on the page that says Holly. And you should do the tank calibration and then do the standard gauge calibration. I think that's probably the way to go. Because it seems to be working now. Let's do a uh, three quarter tank. Look at that. Three quarters of a tank. Half a tank. And almost full. Or, I mean, almost empty. Fully empty. Completely empty. Still wigs out every once in a while. I don't know what that's all about. Something's loose. Alright, it's working. The gauge will be installed at a later date. And let's install this. So, I do need to still drill three more or five more holes in my tank, which sucks because I got to vacuum it out that then. So, let's get the tank back up here and do that. There's like a hundred mosquitoes right here. I gotta get a fan. Okay, Holly, when you send your hardware kit, send nuts. It's probably a good idea. How are you supposed to install this? There's nothing to thread this into. What's up, babe? Um, Alright, because Holly didn't send the hardware or it was designed to go into some sort of factory holes that my tank doesn't have, this is where we're going to end the video. The next video maybe will be installing the tank, but you get the gist of it. We installed the Hyperfuel 40015 in-tank retrofit EFI fuel pump and the Holly Easy fuel sender. 
and we used KBS tank coating product to coat the entire side of the tank and get rid of all the pinholes. So I feel like it's a successful mission. We got a working fuel pump that we can use and a working fuel system. We also made some fuel lines. So uh, yeah, that's where we're gonna end it. Well, thanks, thanks for watching this episode. And um, it's pretty beautiful, so really good. It's a beautiful gas tank, the wife says. That's that was my goal, a beautiful tank. It's a beautiful. I'm gonna try to get the camera. Oh. You got it on me. <laughs> you got it on. You got it in my <laughs> All right, so thanks for watching, Texas Hillbilly. Wait, look at this potato. Come on. Let's make a face. Looks like a mitten. Look, I'm gonna make a face really quick. Why didn't you put nuts in the package? Where yeah, are my nuts? Why? Where are my nuts at? On that note, we will see you next video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Really, a comment. I'd love to hear from y'all. And check out our store. Check out the uh, Texas Hillbilly merch. And goodbye. Yeah,